By the end of this video, I hope you'll be able to explain the answer to the following question. How does deflation affect net income when using FIFO or LIFO inventory cost flow assumptions? Now, if you want to know about inflation, just watch my other video, which is about inflation. Let's jump right into an example. Let's assume that on day one, you buy one gumball at a unit cost of $4. On day two, one gumball at a unit cost of three. Day three, one gumball at a unit cost of two. And then on day four, you sell one gumball. So let's do a squiggly line just to note that there's a sale on that day. And we'll say sell one at, and we'll say the selling price is $10. So that means whether it's FIFO or LIFO, that sales revenue is going to be $10 because the cost flow assumption does not affect the price you charge to your customers. Then on day five, you buy one gumball at a unit cost of $1. Now here's the challenge. When you sell this one gumball on day four, you've got to figure out what cost to expense related to that one gumball. Since you weren't watching the person grab the gumball, you don't know whether they took the one from day two or the one from day three, the one from day one, so you just have to assume. Let's assume that regardless of which gumball they took, maybe they took the gumball from day three, we'll assume that they actually took the gumball from day one. If that were the case, the cost of goods sold would be this $4. So let's put that in, $4. If you look at this graph, you see that the price is falling. This is called a deflationary environment. So in this case, what we had to do is we had to go to the date of sale, and since it's FIFO, that means go first in, go all the way back to the beginning of time, and then come back for, until you find a cost that has not been expensed yet. And that would be this one unit cost at $4. So this is our FIFO cost of goods sold because it's the very first cost in that has not yet been expensed yet. will have to be the first cost that we expense out. Which means since this $4 unit cost was expensed, that means these others the $3 unit, the $2 unit, and this one even after the sale, $1 unit, have not been expensed. Those are an ending inventory. So if we write those down, that So these ones that are not sold yet, they must still be in ending inventory. So that would be one at $3, one at $2, and one at $1, which equals a total of six dollars still in ending inventory. With that in mind, we can compute the total goods that were available for sale, which is the four that we did sell, and the six that we still have. So we had ten dollars of goods available for sale. We've reconciled because four were sold and six were not. We've got a FIFO inventory. That's the FIFO ending inventory, is those three right there. What this means is that the gross margin is going to be $6. We don't know what the net income will be because there's probably some operating expenses, but um, compared to LIFO, we'll see that the uh, net income under FIFO is actually going to be lower than LIFO, and we'll come and look at that uh, in a minute. Okay, let's go to uh, LIFO. Under LIFO, what you do is you start at the point of sale and you go directly back to the very last cost that came in. So this is going to be our LIFO cost of goods sold. And let's put that down. That's a $2 cost of goods sold. Resulting in a gross margin of $8. Now as you can see, LIFO wound up with a higher gross margin because it had a lower cost of goods sold. Since it's expensing this lower cost because it's in a de deflationary environment, it has a higher gross margin. Whereas FIFO expensed the higher cost and therefore resulted in a lower gross margin. What that also means is that LIFO will have a higher net income and FIFO will have a lower net income. Let's look at what gets stuck in ending inventory. The ending inventory for LIFO will be this $4 unit, this $3 unit, which did not get expensed because we only sold one, and this $1 unit. If you add those up, let's add those up, it's a 
$4 unit, a $3 unit, and a $1 unit. That comes out to be $8. And as you can see, the total cost of goods available is the 8 that we still have and the $2 that we expense. Total cost of goods that could have possibly been sold during this period is $10. So I hope that this uh, picture helps you understand uh, the impact of a deflationary environment when you use FIFO and LIFO. Wish you all the best. Aloha.